welcome to Flat Earth Debate Uncut and After Show. I'm your host Nathan Oakley and if you are new to this channel or you've not done so already then be sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification icon and join button if you'd like to become a Nathan Oakley 1980 channel member and keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you would like to support the channel, there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they premiere. There's also a PayPal, Patreon and crypto link in the info box below the video. Speaking of Patreon, I'm going to do a quick shout out to all of you who do support me on Patreon. So a massive shout out of thanks and appreciation to Malby Styles, Troy Shuka, Bo Snail, Joseph Pizarro, Samson, Maris, Mobile Mac 777 Neo The One, Lost Cat FE, Rob W, Open Minded, Reese Pound, Del West Watson, Mike, Muted, Dick Earth Skeptic, NA Literalist, Maria Neelands, Unbelievable Productions, Blue Ridge Ranger, Rob H, The Real Gabster, Windrider, Liam Nedrick, Abraham Mohammed, Nyby, Adrian Quintana, Skeptic936, Life is Short, Fireball X, The Flat Earth Channel.com, Texas Mike, Edwin Johnson, Kirsten Smith, and David Wayne Foster. So another massive thank you to all of you for supporting me on Patreon. Also below this video, there is a link to get £50 for swapping your UK energy supplier to Octopus Energy. I'll hand over now to Discord and Google so you can enjoy their conversation while I set up for today's live show. Sorry, you've, you've sent me distance to object on Skype. Do you want me to put this on screen? Yes. Give me a second so I can scale it a bit nicer. Okay, go ahead. All right. What was the famous quote from uh, Tim Hosman? We don't expect the horizon. Nobody claims the horizon is Earth curve. All right. Well, here's a picture. On a globe, a uh, presupposed globe, shows the observer to the left, shows the object to the right, which is the building. It has two statements above it, distance to object and then distance to horizon. Now in this depiction with a dotted line and the observer's eye line, basically, it's telling you that the horizon is earth curve and it's blocking the bottom of that building, is it not? Yeah, their horizon based on a physical geometric sphere edge based on R, yes. Yeah, okay, so this is what they've always told us I mean, even as a little kid, this is what they always told us. And now Tim Osmond comes and says what? Nobody claims the horizon is Earth curve. Right. So what's so what's blocking the bottom of that building if it's not that bulge in the middle of the Earth curve? Who cares? It's not Earth curve, as Tim rightly Correct. points out. And yesterday, uh, the rumpus pointed out the horizon is not a physical geometric sphere edge. It's not. It's apparent, according to them. Apparent, meaning non-physical, appearing, but not actual. Correct. Now, if you go to the next one, this is uh, the eight inches per mile. This is the ge geometry at work. Uh -huh. did, did you have the close-up on the numbers, or do you have the whole picture? The close-up on the numbers. Do you want the whole picture? No, no. I just, well, you can show that later. But here's the close-up on the numbers. So, as you can see, this is based on the 3959 earth uh, radius uh, presupposed sphere so this is where the bulge should be uh, based on geometry and so if they say it's a physical horizon a physical blockage it has to match these numbers if it's going to match the radius of 3959 and yet the picture before would validate that if it was true and yet what did the uh, rumpa say the parent yeah, we don't have, we cannot see the geometric horizon that only exists in the maths. What we actually see is an apparent horizon that would be a not actual location where the sky appears to meet the ground or sea. So then all these images and all these experiences that people have had where the bottom is disappearing first has nothing to do with a physical geometric horizon. It all has to do with optical and what's in the air that day, how foggy it is, and how clean it is and your height and so forth. Yes, but ultimately it's not Earth curve because we don't have a physical geometric sphere edge for a horizon. Precisely. It's so simple, isn't it? If you take the horizon take is not Earth curve. Believed, That's the statement. The horizon is not Earth curve. I missed the first part of that. The horizon 
which is where their argument begins, according to their debate tips, is not Earth curve. Is that circa 2020 or 2021, or has that always been that way? It's circa 2020, so you get to the point where you demonstrate with their <laughs> parameters in place, radius 3959, where their physical horizon, the thing they claimed blocked boats and buildings, would be. When you demonstrate it beyond its physical capabilities, they tell us that it's not physical. It's a refracted horizon. Now, their refraction's based on a physical horizon, so that makes it paradoxical. In nature, you can't have a horizon move to a non-physical location because you're deriving and claiming that the horizon itself proves that we've got a radius value and a sphere-shaped Earth. Their horizon is Earth curve, but they're telling us how it isn't. It's refracted, non-geometric, apparent making it a debunking of the assertion that the horizon is Earth curve. So they're debunking their own claim in rebuttal to the Black Swan. So it's circa 2020 because of the Black Swan. The horizon is not physical. And they need to prove that it is physical and it is Earth curve physically blocking things. That's their claim now debunked by the Black Swan. Yeah, so are they not in trouble here no, by no. the law of non-contradiction as well as uh, geometry? Yeah, if it's refracted... Even if we accepted that they moved the horizon with a value that's based on a physical horizon, that's an R value they're trying to prove as being physical, as non-physical. Even if we accepted that, then their parameters aren't geometric anymore because they've got a non-physical tangent point. Can't draw a straight line to it if it's bent, and that's what they're doing when they move the horizon to a non-physical location. Well, a non-physical location isn't something that can block boats and buildings with its physical earth curve edge nature. Boats aren't falling over a sphere edge. See what I did there? Boats aren't falling over your sphere edge horizon because the horizon's not Earth curve. We're being told that by the globe side. Go on this next slide. I just, yeah, I just sent you the next slide. I'll just leave this for your commentary. I think you see what I see here. Yeah, this depicts how they only have one assertion for what causes the horizon in orthographic view. On the bottom, you have what's causing the bottom of obstruction according to them. Well, a physical geometric sphere edge i.e. a hill getting in the way. Well, that is depicted inside profile as your horizon. This centre point, the tangent point of the globe they're claiming is proven by this observation, is the horizon. Whereas in a flat plane depiction, there is no horizon. It wouldn't matter if I wrote one million miles on this diagram. The guy would still be the same feet and inches value the wind turbine would still be the same feet and inches value. And if I write one million miles on here, it doesn't make the depiction inaccurate. In orthographic view, you can have these two things at this distance with a million miles written between them. And the guy will still be six feet and the turbine will still be 150. Well, it doesn't give you a horizon. Whereas if you insert a sphere edge by way of removing perspective, which is what this depiction does, the only thing causing... The bottom of this particular depiction of a turbine to be blocked, according to them, is the horizon as a physical obstruction. What do they cry at the moment because of the black swan circa 2020? Well, the horizon's not physical. It's apparent. It's moved. It's a representation of the physical horizon in a different position. So you're saying that an aberration, a ghost of the horizon you're claiming is physical, is what blocks stuff. A non-physical horizon is proving a physical horizon. It's a complete paradox. Also, the representation itself, orthographic view, doesn't give you any perspective. A horizon isn't a single dot, tangent point, with a curve getting in the way of something in the distance. A horizon's a straight line that runs across your field of view. And it's a point where things get too small to see in the distance, based on the aperture of the thing you're viewing it with. Now, this depiction removes all aspects of perspective. As I say, it doesn't matter if I write one million miles on this line, this will not change in size, this will not change in size, because these are depicted in actual size. Feet, as I've given it, 6 and 150. Well, the apparent size, that would be how things appear to look, changes with distance. If you ignore all aspects of the fact that things get smaller into the distance, you can then assert that the reason the bottom is being obscured, according to them, is because an earth curve edge physical tangent point gets in the way. Until we show that it's beyond the capabilities of a physical tangent point, that would be to say that this obstruction, they claim, is beyond the thing it's supposed to be obstructing in the black swan. 
Well, obviously, that makes it non-physical, and they tell us just how non-physical it is to the point where they tell us nobody's claiming the horizon's Earth curve, even though that's the very thing they're trying to prove. Beautiful. Brilliant. Brilliantly said. They again, crack villain. <laughs> I said brilliantly said, bro. Brilliantly said. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Seth, man, for putting the It's just silly, in. dude. It's really silly. You know, the fact that it moves, even if it was to just move forward, what does that mean? It means that it cannot be anything that a boat ever went over, right? It's just a fact. Because even if you could see that location and a boat was there and obviously the horizon was still behind the boat, you would start to see the bottom disappear first, right? You'd just still be able to see behind it. I don't know how that would happen. More well, refracted up, obviously, as they say, but refracting physical location. It's just absolutely ridiculous. At best, obviously. It couldn't. Ridiculous. You if you've got a hill, if you look out your window now and there's a hill in the way of something there in the mid mid ground. So the hill's in the foreground. The hill's uh, the thing that is being obscured, say a road, is in the mid ground. I don't know, the yeah. road or row of mountains in the background. Well, at no point will you wake up, look out your window and see that the hill that was obscuring, what did I say it was obscuring a road, <laughs> will suddenly be behind the road. <laughs> it's not going to happen. so ridiculous saying it. It sounds so stupid even saying that, doesn't it? Well, they don't. They like, say it's to... refracted. They say, it's, <sighs> oh, it's refracted. It's bent up. The light's being bent. It's like what? So the obstruction yeah. in the foreground is being bent up to be behind the thing it's supposed to be obscuring. Yes, they cry. Well, it's well. refraction. But moreover, the refraction they it'd be use like to do it. would be like waking up in the morning. Say again? Uh, sorry. Sorry, okay. so it'd be like waking up in the morning and basically looking out at that hill over there and the house on the top of the hill. And it's just, I don't know, like, you know, it's about a mile and a half away. Let's say it ends up being 10 times further away than what's supposed to be that horizon. Well, so that house is going to be 10 miles away. Okay, that makes sense, guys. But they would never say that because they know that sounds ridiculous. What's the difference, though? Well, nothing, nothing, because everything's refracted in their model, always. Everything's in a position that it shouldn't be always. in physical terms. <laughs> it's all refracted. And the refraction, this is the point, is what they're utilising to claim this effect. Well, refraction in their model is 7 over 6 of the radius in standard form. Needs it, yeah. Well, that yeah. needs R. Well, what's R? Well, it's the tangent point horizon. Well, that's a physical yeah. sphere edge they're saying isn't physical. Well, we're going to justify why it's not physical, but that's the claim. The claim is it's a physical horizon getting in the way and they give us feet and inches for how much it gets in the way, only to later tell us that it's non-physical refracted. It's like, well, how the hell is a non-physical location that moves with the weather and is beyond the physical restraints of a geometric model, you claim, and are trying to prove with the horizon, how can that be beyond the horizon? You know, you can't. It's the end of the model. Hey, sleeping warrior. I got one more. I got one more picture for you. Oh, okay. Hey, sleeping warrior. Good morning. Good okay, morning. It's on. All right, so <laughs> look at that green, uh, the green colored statement right in the middle of the picture. What's the horizon where the line of sight is tangent to the surface? Why does the horizon look flat? It says at the top. Look at the depiction. Does that look like a straight tangent line or does that look like the top of an orange being cut off a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, it's definitely the top of an orange because we know it's a, a globe, so it's just not big enough. We're too, it's too big for us to see. You see, that's all it is. It just appears flat. Then why does it say where the line of sight is tangent to the surface? But line of sight, it's got a straight line in this depiction, and they're arguing currently for that line being bent, and the entire model hinges on them having a tangent point horizon. It's geometry. It's yep. a geometric model. It needs a straight line to the horizon. That's what yeah, keeps but there you are no are. straight lines in non-Euclidean geometry. And they're refracting their tangent point to a different location. Correct. Correct. Really? No tangent point, no straight line, no geometry. Bye-bye, Globe Earth. <laughs> yeah, that's it. It's basically that. The straight line becomes a curve on their model. That it whole, All of it reduces oh, yeah. down to that point. Yeah, and they could we get away with just the about... Day, sleeping, weren't we? They could just about get away with yeah. asserting that until it was the tangent that they bent. And it breaks the geometry. It's no longer a tangent anymore. No longer capable of deriving any geometry from. 
If you bend that tangent line, it's not a tangent, and therefore you don't have geometry, and that's what they're trying to prove, that Earth has a physical shape to it with a tangent point horizon and an R value derived thereof. Yeah, that all goes down the wayside or to the wayside as soon as you bend the tangent because it's not a tangent anymore. Yeah. They've got le curve. They need a curved level, basically. This is what they need. Yeah, they need a curved level. That's right. Are, are you ready for one were, more? Really? Just to top it off. Yeah, go ahead. Still got this. Oh, Why does the horizon look flat at the moment? Did you have another one on? Oh, okay. Yeah, it's up now. Got it. Horizon coordinate system. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, I've labeled this, at least from my perspective, the year of the sextant, because it proves that the black swan argument is valid, and it's a navigational tool that works and has worked for hundreds of years and still works. So as you can see here, look at that nice, big, flat, tangent line on top of the globe model that's within the celestial sphere, the imaginary endless sphere where all the stars are attached to it. And notice how they can get angles if you make that tangent line. Look, how it goes all the way to the edge of the celestial sphere on either side. So when they say that you take the measurement uh, from the center of the Earth, they are actually doing this as a flat Earth model shows here because it's flat and they move this plane, this the circle flat plane, and they take that to the center to validate their sphere uh, in double speak. Because unless they can bring the sunlight in in parallel rays, this, their globe doesn't work. So what they do is they take actual measurements from a flat plane, and then they say, well, how can we make this work on a sphere? Oh, we'll just take everything to the center so we can have the same angles that we get from a flat plane. Exactly. The zenith, the line yeah. that would be a plumb line, directly down through your head, is presumed to be pointing towards the center of a presupposed spherical Earth. So in other words, if this line here, which you've got as your north celestial pole, if that was if this depiction of the circle was the outside edge of their presupposed spherical Earth, this point here would roughly be England, where the line to the celestial pole crosses the outside edge of the sphere. Well, if you're standing in England and you drop a plumb line, the plumb line will go straight down. But you'll reference a datum and assume that, no, that line that goes straight down is actually pointing at an angle towards the centre of a presupposed spherical Earth. That's how they do it. They hijack what is essentially a plumb line straight down, and say that no, it's pointing at an angle if I presuppose that I'm on a sphere. And when I presuppose I'm on a sphere, I'm sat at this point on the sphere, and down is actually to the presupposed center of a presupposed spherical Earth. And when they tell you that you're always on top of the ball, what they actually mean is your starting point for an assumption of a ball will be to draw a line through your zenith to the center of their presupposed ball. So suddenly England isn't here, it's on the top of the ball. And your line, which is a plumb, just goes to the center of a presupposed spherical Earth with you reorientating the point that you're going to measure from to the top of it. That's all they do. And then they make all of their measurements, as Tenth Man's pointed out, with angles that require a flat plane to begin with. Otherwise, you can't do any of the measurements. So they only assume it in the first yeah. instance, but then actually measure it flat. Uh, Nathan, last illustration Plan to point your very statement. Oh, well done. Yeah, go ahead, point. whoever that is. Crack Plan line. our surveying point to point, basically. So, yeah, it, it is true. And it's just ridiculous. Sorry, I just had to say that. Yeah, it is point. They, that's how they measure this. They apparently plumb it up, as said by surveyors, and then it's point to point. And it literally uses a, a system that is a level table in order to establish the data points anyway. Most of them have no clue what they're doing. They work on a preset of data points that were derived by somebody in the past and then just go and check their findings as if they're like almost doing them themselves but they're not it, it, it's kind of ridiculous like surveying in general but yeah definitely surveying anyway yeah got your last slide up 10th thanks Craig. so on. this go is ahead. this Thanks. is the contrast you just explained this so i'm showing it in the picture they took what i that uh previous picture where that uh flat tangent plane is now at at the center of the earth within the celestial sphere the previous picture showed that at the top of the surface of the earth 
and then now it's taking it right where it should be in their model. So uh, you can you can comment, but it pretty much your last statement comment to them what they're doing here. Well, that's it, isn't it? That's that's the summary. It's what what more is there to say really? Beyond the presupposition, utilizing datums and depicting now as it is, as I've just described, with the zenith now at whatever point pointing straight down, that's just going to put you on this point here. Well, therefore, and you've assumed it... you're on the top of a ball. And what your zenith is now doing is giving you your datum point on the ball. But then from there on in, everything that you've got to do requires Euclidean maths. It requires you to actually do it on a flat plane. Otherwise, you can't derive any <laughs> angles. <laughs> so what more is there to say than the Earth is flat, obviously yeah. and observably. And measurably. And measurably, correct. Welcome to Flat Earth Debate Live. I'm your host Nathan Oakley and if you are new to this channel or you've not done so already then be sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification icon and join button if you'd like to become a Nathan Oakley 1980 channel member and keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you would like to support the channel there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they are live there's also a paypal patreon and crypto link in the info box below the video also below this video there is a link to get 50 pounds back for swapping your uk energy supplier to octopus energy most importantly if you'd like to join the discussion simply mute the page you are currently watching then click the link in the info box below this video to join the panel and express your views on the nature of earth if you do join, please don't swear. If you do, you'll be ejected. And if you are, please don't try to rejoin the stream using sock accounts. You'll be warmly welcome back on the next stream. Please also share the show on social media. Sharing the show obviously increases the live audience, but this in turn increases the chances of a more diverse panel. So please share the show on Facebook and Twitter. One last time, if you're new to the channel or you've not done so already, then be sure to subscribe hit the bell notification icon and join button to keep up to date with the Flat Earth debate. Now we are joined by 10th Man, Sleeping Warrior, Neil, and a whole bunch of people in Discord. So welcome one and all. Good morning. Hello. Wow. Yo, yo, yo. Morning. Pop, pop my ears. Hello. Already got to do a shout out. So big shout out to Del West Watson for hitting the super chat before the show even began. So thank you very much indeed for the support. Really do appreciate it. Uh, as I'm hustling people off mute in Discord, I'm going to ask, is there any evidence of a physical geometric sphere edge horizon formerly known as Earth curvature? No, they lost their angles. Nonsense. Uh -oh. Curvature? Where? Well, they claim there's eight inches per mile squared of it as you look out upon a horizon which they claim is a physical geometric sphere edge blocking boats and buildings. So they've literally got boats falling over their horizon, but they're currently telling us how non-physical it is. Any evidence of the R value, Earth radius? Nonsense. R be none. All right, Nathan, do you think we could apply George Moose's theory or dictum, which is... Um... The Earth, there is no evidence of a radius, but you can think that there is evidence of a radius. Does that, do you reckon that would cross apply? Well, no, because there's mathematics that tell us where we can utilize their presupposed radius measured by Al Biruni with a physical horizon derivation and drop to the horizon to give him the mathematics to derive this R value based on its physical horizon that he's measuring. Well, based on that 
measurement that has been taken, they then presuppose it in the mathematics that asserts the same as an observation. That would be that the horizon is Earth curve and it's blocking things in the distance with its physical nature. Shout out to Helio Pabon who says, no curvature, no radius with super chats. Really appreciate it. <laughs> hello. Uh, hello, Marvin. Hey, Sleeping Warrior. Uh, yesterday, uh, Rumpus came on and the way he exited was the normal way the ballers always exit. Well, it's it works in the mathematics. Now, here's Nathan saying, oh, if it works in the mathematics, well, then your Earth curve has to be here if we use mathematics, and it's not. It's, it's yeah, that was brilliant. It's just modus tollens. If you understand the black swan argument, you can debate like that with anybody because you understand implicitly that you require the geometry that they're claiming. They're claiming Earth curve edge horizon. You look at any tips and tricks for debating a flat earther and they'll tell you explicitly your argument starts with the horizon because you're asserting it's earth curve edge the boats fall over how ironic that your controlled op narrative from the flat earth society would suggest that we have boats falling over an edge when in reality your edge earth curve edge is the horizon and you have boats falling over and you qualify how much the physical earth curve edge obstruction has blocked those boats or buildings with a perspective hijacking feet and inches actual size value, ignoring the fact that they reduce an angular size into the distance to a point where they'll disappear completely due to angular limitation. Nevertheless, their assertion is that we've got an R value and the tangent point R value is acquired by the physical horizon. They now tell us, quote Tim Ottoman, nobody claims the horizon is Earth curve. Uh, yeah, you do. It's the fundamental basis of your religious belief that you've got Earth curve. Your Earth curve is the horizon. It's on screen now with this joke of a word gravity any evidence scientific thereof of gravity nonsense no. they can't even define gravity nathan but they all believe it they believe this, they believe something that they can't define but they do understand because it let's be honest it does make sense but they the position changed in world war one but they still cite it i don't understand how they can ignore the current position in physics but they call us the science what? deniers whoa, whoa, whoa. what do you mean it doesn't make sense what? explain that Position of the thing that they did never did claim a hypothesis for in the first instance, then yeah. they changed that position to another thing that they can't claim a hypothesis for. That's correct. They change one just so story for another, are we? And that's correct. Shout out to Julio Pabon for the super chat. He says, No gravity. Indeed. But yes, Anthony, they can't Indeed. even define what is clearly defined by Einsteinian pseudo Ramonian force space. That would be the bending of space time caused by the uneven distribution of mass. That's their gravity. Not a force, I might add. I was just wondering if Wait, was that it makes sense. Uh, I, if you think of it in this way, right? Um, I, I think I talked over crack. Sorry, but um, it, it doesn't make it does make sense. Like uh, a game of shoots and ladders makes sense, right? If you land on the shoot, you're gonna have to slide down that shoot and start from some space far back, um, and that makes sense within that game, the way it was modeled, the way it was made to play. So in this system where they're religious and they believe, oh, we live on a ball. Oh, gravity makes sense because if there was no gravity, how the fuck could I stick to a ball? Yeah, it would make sense in that respect, in that regard. I still don't think it does. Yeah, well, all I was going to say is that basically they add physical attributes to things such as uh, time, bending of space time. They like to do this. This is why we hear ridiculous comments such as, oh, speed limits are physical, because you have to do that once you go on that philosophical tangent that things that are immaterial will bend, warp, whatever you want to say. You know, you do need gravity on a ball, obviously, but the, the, the lack of understanding as to why you do not need it on a measurably flat plane is beyond me. This objective direction of down was only created with gravity. That was the question. Gravity was created why are we here how are we able to stick on the ball if you're saying it's a ball oh gravity a single vector all the way across a spherical ball everywhere oh that makes sense that's how we stick to it how can they not understand that that that, that was made up because nobody understood why they didn't fall off they can't understand why it doesn't need to be there now 
I know why it's confusing because there are certain people in our on our side that push that story because, well, I don't know what the reason is, but without understanding that aerogel, which is the lightest known solid that we know about, is six times more dense than the medium of air. Now, if if that's the lightest object and it's six times more dense, and we know that more dense stuff displaces less dense stuff because that's the way it works, then that gives you an explanation for why you've got the misapprehension that there is everything going down because it's because everything's more dense than the medium of air. We don't have any solids that are less dense than air. Welcome to flat Earth. Yeah, and the Earth itself is more dense than you, right, as well. Obviously, the earth so is maybe more that's dense than me, correct? Not necessarily. Correct. What if you were swimming? Well, it's not earth then, is if it? You swim and you stop swimming, you sink. Right? Not always, because you don't, it depends on whether you're you know, there in your life. Hey, let's not get into but the wrangle dangle, right? Yes, things in place <laughs> depending on their density. Yes, that's the bottom line here. Let's not get into the wrangle dangle. I was just being facetious. Right, I've got so, um... if, if I may, so the other caller said a uh, single vector of down. So where's this universal bias in uh, practicality and demonstration? Yeah, that's what I'd like to know. I do want to put out an APB, an all points bulletin for the rumpus. Uh, Nathan, would you mind presenting my screen? So yesterday's show um, was all about the rumpus and these horizons and where is the horizon? Is it geometric or is it not geometric? Have you got a straight line to it or is it a curved line to it that we can think of as straight and all that kind of stuff? And ultimately, I want rumpus to be aware that there's um, a claim um, and the claim is that there is a geometric horizon that we can never see. And all I wanted him to do is pin the tail on the donk on the donkey here because I want to just get him to tell me where he thinks the horizon is. We did an exercise with um, the uh, black swan where we were guessing where the geometric horizon is. But because it's very obscured and lots of bendy stuff going on with refraction and all that, basically they said that we couldn't ever work it out. Okay, fair enough. Here's a better one. This has got no refraction in it. This has just got um, a nighttime observation of a laser. And I'm going to say it's somewhere between the laser, the light source there, and the reflection of it on the water. And I'd just like Rumpus to come in if he's about and just tell me where I get it wrong. Because uh, I just want to, if, if the geometric horizon is somewhere else, other than this, he, I want the explanation for why we see the reflection of the laser underneath the laser original point source of light. Because there is a problem, Rumpus. So if you're out there and you're weaseling, Come on, come on down. Let's see you explain this one, please. Can't. The problem anyway, is he'll start chanting. Hold on, he can't. His explanation will be refraction, and his refraction requires an R value, and his R value requires a physical sphere edge for a horizon, which has been debunked by the black swan. So you can't assert that a horizon is capable of being measured if you're simultaneously telling us that we do not see a geometric horizon, as he told us yesterday. You can't measure it if you can't see it. Well, if you can't measure it and you can't see it, we can't see or measure Earth curve. That's the bottom line. So what are you going to do? Use the R value from a non-physical horizon that can't be measured geometrically to assert that you've got a geometry with an R value? Because that isn't capable of having geometry assigned if you've got a bent line to a claim to be tangent point. They just don't have a tangent point. Well, if you haven't got a tangent point, you haven't got geometry. And their claim is that Earth has geometry. Well, we it's said worse than that. If, if the horizon that they claim is not visible and measurable, then what they are claiming is not a horizon. Exactly. Chocolate would say that if he was here. What's the geometric horizon? A non-visible location. Well, then it's not a horizon. It only exists in the maths. Well, then it's not a horizon. The fact that you've called it a horizon in your maths side on view with a tangent point that can't be measured that you're simultaneously claiming is moved to a different location, well, then you don't have any Earth curve geometry. We only have one horizon. And the horizon in the Earth curve mathematics is physical and geometric. It's the claim we've got Earth curve. Check out any points and tips from people suggesting how you should debate a flat earther. Start your argument with the horizon is what they'll tell you. What, a physical horizon that's blocking boats and buildings? Well, that's not the case. The horizon is not Earth curve. Well, first they say you got to gain their, gain their trust. Yeah, trust me, the horizon's Earth curve. Well, it's beyond the physical capabilities of a physical sphere that you're claiming. 
Well, it's a moved non-physical apparition of the Earth curve that we measure to move it with. Oh, that makes no sense. Yeah, well, you just need to trust me. Oh, oh I got a new one. They're not claiming it. It just is. My prediction is next we'll have them telling us to prove to them that the Earth curve horizon is claimed by them. <laughs> That's what we'll get next. That's true. I, you, well, you're maybe right. they can redefine what claiming means, you know? You got to go somewhere. Or they'll say... I've already had them say it to me. That No, you're the ones that claimed that guy. You're like the that. one that claims the horizon's Earth curve. Oh, do I? The flat earther claims that the horizon's Earth curve. Well, ironically, that's semi-true because they've part of the controlled opposition narrative is to have flat earthers arguing with globe earthers about what the horizon does. Does it bend? Uh, what a not actual non-physical location should we argue about whether it's bending or not? Why? Do we argue about how flat it is at altitude or about the fact that horizon means horizontal when we're describing a not actual non-physical location that their entire argument hinges on proving as physical? Capable of blocking boats. Boats falling over it at a certain feet and inches value. Well, that's a physical obstruction they're claiming. Well, if the horizon's not physical, and they're telling us just how non-physical it is, if it's not geometric, then it's not Earth curve. So why would we be arguing about how bent it is? Who cares? It's not a physical location. It's not Earth curve. End of argument. Um, Nathan, for the horizon to be Earth curve... It has to be physical and measured, and it cannot exceed uh, the limitations of the radius of 39.59. So at an observer height of 1.22, I mean, at one foot, it cannot be more than 1.22 miles out. It could be closer due to fog and all, all kinds of other things. But once it exceeds the 1.22 miles at a one foot observer height, then it's no longer physical, it's apparent. Exactly. Motor stone and splats one. Any single viable hypothesis from any of the fields of astronomy, cosmology, or astrophysics? Uh, I, I still had one more remark, or yes, a, a comparison with the uh, Earth curve thing. And that is that way in the past, when people absolutely did not care of the shape of the Earth, there were still a lot of people that would scout, that could keep a lookout for animals, wild animals, or, uh, I don't know, bandits or whatever in the distance. It was generally known that if your fortress or whatever your lookout is, is like in, yeah, on a flat plane, then you could see incredibly far. But yeah, if you're in hill territory, then you, then it's an entirely different setup because yeah, you can't see behind the hill. It obstructs. It like shortens your effective horizon, what you can see, and things can hide behind it. Now you can, of course, also use that to hide yourself in the hills from being spotted and known to be there. You can dig it into the hill or whatever. But yeah, that's a great distinction. If it's flat, you can potentially see incredibly far. So they would prefer lookout towers on flat planes because at times you could see incredibly far. It's very useful for control and oversight and tactical decisions concerning logistics of armies, which is very time and food and money consuming. So you have to do everything right and as fast as possible. So yeah, you need the earth to be flat or everything yeah, you wouldn't see anything. You wouldn't see anything coming. Yeah, it's a point that both um, Taboo Conspiracy and Quantum Eraser make quite regularly. If their claim is correct, which is that nothing is where it's supposed to be, everything's refracted and bent around the physical sphere they've assumed, well, then that would render all navies and armies and all their targetings. It would render the whole lot useless. Right, we'd, because it would be way too easy to sneak up on some on some group. They, you could never see it coming unless you have spying satellites everywhere. <laughs> so any viable hypothesis from any of the fields of astronomy, cosmology, or astrophysics? Satellites. Laptops. Can I just add to that very quickly? Actually? Yeah, yeah, feel free. Um, just So basically, we're talking about German searchlights and things like this, right? It's completely true. So they would basically have been they would basically be no reason whatsoever to even have these. Okay, so 
Uh, Shineworth, uh, uh, 43 searchlights made in 1943. Um, what was it? I think, yeah, it's got a 2.7 billion Hefner candle power. So 2.4 giga candela, if anyone knows. So How many candela? 120 kilowatt okay. generator. How many candela? Sorry, just give me the number again. Of up to 8 point, uh, sorry? Well, how many candela? Because I can I can convert that to lumens, which is something I understand. Okay, how many candela? That's so two point four giga candelas. Wow, that's bright. Okay, right. thank you. Very. So it could detect targets at distances of up to eight point one miles. But this one is one of the big ones, right? So and it became obsolete. It was the two hundred centimeter edition. So basically, where would this be mounted? It was often mounted actually on the floor. Sometimes one foot off the floor, because if you look at the actual thing that this is attached to, so it's uh, it's it's basic mounting system that comes with it that isn't on an arm or attached to a vehicle. It's literally able to go down to one foot, even half a foot, in fact, and also up to about three feet. What about the, uh, you know, that's an acute angle, but it still goes up to 8.1 miles. We know the, you know, we know the, we know what that should be. 1.225 times the square root of the reserve side of feet. How is that hitting anyone at eight miles? Mm. It just is. It's it's difficult to get out of this habit of saying, well, how is that possible? It's like try and rewire your programming, your mental cognition or whatever. You know, I'll give you an example well, of how I did this, right? <laughs> so if, if you think of the clock, Ranty's clock, clock at 20 miles, what is it? Well, it's a clock at 20 miles. Why do we see it? Why are you asking me that? We see it because it's there. There it is. Clock at 20 miles. That's it. That's the end of a flat earther's explanation for these things. Why can this target light things up? Why would you ask why it's lighting them up? It is lighting them up. Who cares? Well, why aren't we floating up towards the air? Because we're not. <laughs> well, yeah, similar thing. But my, my point is that the reason we ask that question is because we've so programmed to believe that that should be a problem. Well, why should it be a problem? Well, because earth curves should get in the way. So we need to physically assume that we've got an earth curve edge that should be getting in the way and then justify why it isn't. N no, that it's just lighting stuff up at eight miles. Thanks to the black swan. Well, I think the, I, th I think the habit we all have, <laughs> or I do as well as this caller, is that uh, we find an abnormality in their model, and we ask it as a question, even if they're not here to answer it. <laughs> it, it frustrates me, though, because people will say, we see this item. Well, it, we shouldn't see it. Well, why shouldn't we see it? Well, because on the globe model, oh, 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 what do you mean we shouldn't see it because a globe model says we shouldn't? That doesn't mean we shouldn't see it. No, I'm in complete agreement with you. We see it because we see it. Simple as that. And the yeah. baller's going to say, yeah, but it's... Yeah, it's... but most of, most of the world says we're on a globe. Yeah, but that's... My point is, Neil, that's their problem then. What's, what's your explanation for this clock? Well, I can see it. It's a nice clear day. What, what do you want? Well, it shouldn't really be there. But the reason it is is because it's a slightly looming non-standard refraction high in a holographic projection of a clock from behind the reified edge of an earth curve that was formerly the physical geometric sphere edge now debunked by the black swan. So it's actually a slightly looming non-standard refraction high in a clock. Not a clock. It's behind earth curve edge that we can't see. You go, that sounds insane. It's just a clock. I can just see it. That, that should make everybody a flat earther. Well, there's still plenty of people that would just respond to that, like, but, wow, that sounds so complicated. I'm not going to think about that and just trust this guy because he sounds kind of smart because he's saying something that is so complicated, I don't understand it. But it's asking you to worry about something that's not a concern. You know, if you go outside to your car and you get to your front door and you go, hmm, there's not a pink wobbly monster in my way. Well, let's worry about the pink wobbly monster that should be in the way and why it isn't. You're know, like, uh, that's just nuts. Just walk to your car. No, because there should be a pink wobbly monster in the way. The reason it isn't is because of swamp gas refracting off Venus. And you're like, what are you talking about? And it's the same with the clock or anything else that you see in the distance. It's not because it shouldn't be there. That's 
uh, way of saying to the audience, I'm still wired to think that we're on a globe and this is somehow wrong on a globe. It's like, you're not on a globe. There's no reason to justify seeing things in the distance. You just see them. It's a problem for them, not a problem for you, is my point. And when they ask you, why can we see this? Well, because you've got a set of eyeballs. Chris Berry says... You mean that... Oh, just one second. Chris, Chris Berry says, when ballers fall from space, they say Earth is splat. <laughs> 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 yeah, but Nathan, then they'll say something stupid like, well, why can't you see France from uh, Italy or something ridiculous like that? It's too far yeah, away. Yeah, you can't way. see that far. Not... Angular resolution limit. <laughs> too small. It's too no, far. No, 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 I don't to see that far. Stupid question. Well, you can get into you can get into all of, oh, it's too far and blah, 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 blah. That's very easy to understand, but something that's more easy to understand is there's air in the way. Like you, you turn you turn on your your fucking uh, morning news, and the guy tells you what your visibility for the day is. That's it. Yeah, but then, then yeah, but then my son will come back and say, "Well, well, you can look up and you can see the stars." But then I would say, "Yeah, but we don't know how far away they are." Okay, this is why we get asked this question. It's on screen for the audience, right? So let's pretend that this tower, this wind turbine, is a French turbine. Yeah? Just for the sake of argument. And we're going to say that this guy is in the States. Why not? Yeah? And then we're going to slap on, what is it? How far is it between the, those two? About, I can't remember if it's three or 6,000 miles. How far is it between the States and Europe? About 3,000 miles? Yeah, close to it. Just shy of it. Roughly. Okay, close enough. So we're going to write 3,000 miles on this depiction. Now, according to this depiction, the six-foot man has got a line between him and the target in France. Well, according to this depiction, if I write 3,000 miles on it, this is still 150 foot, this is still six foot, and there's nothing getting in the way, right? So why can't we see it? Well, because of this explanation. Here's our same guy. And what do you know? It's roughly to scale and all, right? This is about how much earth, curve, edge, obstruction, physical, geometric horizon there'd be between the guy and France if he was in the States. Yeah? So this is a French turbine then. And the only reason you can't see it is because a hill, a physical sphere, edge, tangent point horizon, got in the way. It's the only reason. It's the only thing that can stop you seeing all the way across here 3,000 miles. Obviously, earth curve gets in the way. Oh, really? In reality, however, if this was 3,000 miles, this item would be so small that you couldn't resolve it with your eyeball anymore. The angular size would be absolutely tiny. Too small, too C. So why in this depiction can we still see it? Well, it's because it's called orthographic view. It's a way of removing all aspects of perspective. That would be the angular size change at distance. This scale shows this and this at exactly the same actual size, regardless of what distance I write on this line. And this line, or this curved line, can be the only reason why things aren't visible in the distance at infinite distance. It doesn't matter if I put three million miles on this line. The depiction remains the same. Nothing's blocking it. It's because you don't lose things in the distance because something blocks them. They just get too small to see. This depiction, orthographic view, hijacks that effect. It removes perspective and asserts that the effect of perspective is earth curve obstruction getting in the way. A very physical effect. Bearing in mind that this point here, this would be a hill, earth curve, claimed to be getting in the way. We're currently told that that isn't physical. That it's a not actual apparent location. Because we show examples where what they claim is the physical earth curve obstruction is behind the thing it's supposed to be obscuring. A physical geometric impossibility. Therefore, they have to tell us how their claim that they're going to prove that we've got an earth curve because it gets in the way of stuff. Well, it's actually non-physical. And that'll prove that it's blocking stuff by a feet and inches value because it's non-physical, according to them in light of the black swan argument. Anyway, the point of this particular depiction is to show you how they remove perspective. This item will not get any smaller. That would be its apparent size 
as it would if you were actually looking at it in the distance in this depiction. It will say the exact same actual size and it doesn't matter how big a distance I put on this line. This will remain the same size. In reality, when you look out into the distance, stuff that's far away is very small. Yeah, but my son says you could see a plane in the sky 20,000 feet in the air, but if it was 20,000 feet straight ahead, you couldn't see it. That's pretty simple to answer. Uh -huh. uh, the lower you are, even when they uh, teach you how to use the sextant for navigation, they say don't aim at anything below 15 degrees from the horizon because the air is denser. There's all kinds of stuff in the air. So if you go too straight up, that's your zenith. So obviously it's going to be a lot less stuff in the air when you're looking straight up. It's pretty obvious. You just have to look at any picture of a horizon. These trees in this picture are really small. No, no, they're trees. They're actually quite big. They're just very far away. And likewise, this dude looking out at this horizon. Well, you know what? He can't see France if he's in the States looking out at this horizon because it's really, really small. And likewise, the horizon has a sliver beyond the beach of ocean. Now ask yourself this. Is this little section of sand bigger than the wide, wide ocean to the horizon? Well, no, of course not. This is only a few metres. Yet it's half the picture and the vast ocean that we have takes up what, a quarter of an inch? One one twelfth of the picture? Well, why would that be? It's massive, right? The ocean's huge. Well, we've got a very limited angle. We're very low to the ground, and the thing restricting the angle is the deck you're looking over. Now, the stuff that's close to you in terms of that has got a much wider angle, therefore it looks big. But the vast ocean is represented as a tiny little sliver in this picture due to angular resolution limit foreshortening the effects of perspective that are absolutely excluded when you have a view like this where in this depiction is the man's horizon well it doesn't have one because the only assertion for things getting small and disappearing is actually physical obstruction of earth curve something we've debunked with the black swan yeah can i can i finish um, up that statement I... to neil uh i had two people at once whoever wants to go first go yeah, I'll just finish it up. Uh, so when your son looks at that jet in the sky, is it the same size as when he's looking at the jet on the tarmac? No. If you were stood by a jet, you'd have to crick your neck to see how big it was. Whereas you could be looking out at it into the far distance and you would have to be looking at a 90 degree angle to your zenith with it at the horizon. Even though it's still the same physical size, the actual size hasn't changed. But it's teeny tiny and on the horizon and you haven't got a crick your neck to look up at it like you would if you were on the tarmac next to it. <laughs> Right, so uh, there's perspective allowed to show itself for what it is, whereas uh, the ballers want to hijack it and take it out of orthographic view. So just looking at a jet in the sky proves perspective and things get smaller at a further distance, right? Well, I think what do. he's trying to say is if you take the plane and you put it at the same distance, let's say on a, on a mountain 20,000 miles away, he said you still wouldn't see it, but you could look straight up and see it 20,000 feet in the air. I think that's what he's trying to say. Well, right. that's can I add to this a little bit? So, yeah, you can, you I've got to go in one second go anyway. Um, go ahead, but, so, basically, glad you said it back towards the planes because it's re relevant to the point I was about to make, but I'll make a point on this. So, like your son's saying, he's looking up, but he's looking up for a gas pressure gradient. He's not looking across vertically. Is it, and that's the issue, right? So, when you're looking through that, you're looking for more gas. The same way when we go higher and we higher elevation, we look down. This is like the sloped armor conundrum, right? They sloped armor, right? The Russians did. They revolutionized tank armor by doing so, by creating a much, you know, a much more heavy armor, but at the same time, it not be as heavy. Why? Because of the angle the bullet goes through and obviously it reflecting off. So you're looking down for a gradient. You're looking actually vertically at the same time as diagonally through it so you're actually looking through less air when higher but when you look straight up you're looking through less air because of the gradient but as an analogy it's still ridiculous so the iss is 100 meters roughly by 100 meters okay um someone could tell me how high it is is it 240,000 feet or maybe i'm wrong um anybody 240 240 miles right 240 miles okay so 100 meters by 100 meters so there is a plane called an Anatov 225, 
roughly the biggest plane in the world. This thing is roughly 100 meters by 100 meters. Actually has more volumetric size, realistically, because of its body and everything like that. It isn't so fragile and lanky and all this sort of stuff. But at 40,000 feet, the angular size of it is basically similar to what you would see with a passenger plane. So if we move it to double that distance, it won't, it won't be half the size because there's almost like a square law on that in angular size. But if you wouldn't be able to see it. It's the point. It'd be a pinprick. So this idea that we can somehow establish things in the air and their angular size, and this is it's silly, basically, at best. But my main point was that going back to the, the, the lights again, is that in tandem they were used with the German 88, if anyone knows what that is. It was a gun that was purposed to be a flak gun, right? And that's part of the point I'm about to make. It was repurposed as a straight line of sight gun, meaning that it was used across the floor, mounted, okay, in conjunction with these flashlights, also in conjunction with, uh, basically with a form of rudimentary radar, right? But if you look at the actual uh, stats on the gun, for instance, right, so this thing has a barrel length, okay, of 16 feet. So it even has barrel bend, okay, it has the ability in its uh, effective firing rate on a ground target of 14,860 meters. It roughly roughly sits about six feet off the ground. The barrel roughly sits about seven, depending on if you pull it down. To, you can pull it down to about four, okay? So that in mind, when you think of that, this again starts to tell you, how is it getting past the obstruction that is the earth curvature? That's six feet. That's about 3.48 miles away roughly maybe a little bit less um at eight feet i think that's 3.4 eight miles away or something like that so if you think about it this gun in straight line of sight is doing what and this gun was so effective it would it took out 50 shermans in one day on one road at a distance of like seven miles this is impossible this is literally impossible so again in relation yeah. to it being a flat gun and going back to planes yeah. be careful with your phrasing uh, that's what I pulled your mind last time. It's not impossible. It it actually happened. Well, it might have happened. I don't know. I wasn't there. But you know what I'm saying? Just, you're claiming it, it happened because it happened. Load. It's not impossible. It actually happened. But you're saying it's impossible if load. you assume a sphere model. There you go. Perfect. The last point would be this. So when in conjunction there's a flat gun, that means it's firing up at aircraft. Aircraft are apparently uh, kept in a lockstep with the Earth, right? Uh, in, in its orbit as given to us the heliocentric model but the flat gun itself okay is not confined by this is it at all why it's muzzle velocity of like 840 meters a second so when it's firing at planes up in the air okay and you can look at its uh you know radar system that they use it essentially doesn't have anything to do with calculations for Earth's rotation underneath its, uh, you know, underneath its ballistic projectile. So how are they accounting for different different targets at different longitudes and latitudes based on a sphere model up in the air at all different ceiling heights when one thing is rotating and one thing is able to stay in lockstep? There are no calculations for this, and you can't find them anywhere, and these things were incredibly effective. So, I'd like someone to riddle me that at some point. A globe, but no one can do it. Yeah, stuff's not drifting. Thanks. Any evidence that we have axial rotation of the Earth based variety? Nonsense. There is none. Not in Nottingham. Afternoon, everyone. Hello, Adam. Is that just to interrupt me? Is that crack villain I can hear? It is. Well, it was uh, indeed, buddy. Afternoon. I thought it was your voice. I just you want to present to me, can't you? I've got you up on screen. Well, yeah, I must leave you. It's not there, guys. Hold on, we've got some formalities. Go ahead, uh, crack villain and Adam. I was just being polite, right? Just saying hello. I thought it was your voice that was all, dude. So just check in. You left. I'll catch you later, crack. I think he's already done with the pleasantries. Yeah, we're done with the pleasantries. Let me make a point here. So um, I'm not saying that this is true. I'm not saying it's not true. Do you remember the cosmonaut, the Russian cosmonaut that said that we never went to the moon? Well, this channel called Ruptly is presenting evidence that's said to be from a cosmonaut 
Um, he says, that, um, well, the title says, The Moon is Flat. Cosmonaut films Earth's natural satellite from the ISS. Now, we very rarely see pictures of space from the ISS. We always see pictures of the Earth and the glorious nature of Earth that couldn't possibly be created in a studio somehow, somewhere. But we never really see ob uh, observations from um, the ISS of space. But look at this. It's only a couple of seconds, and I'll, I'll, what I'll do is I'll get it to its, opt yeah, basically, Nathan, I'm going to have to play it a little bit. There's no sound with it, though. We don't need sound. And what it's showing is this cosmonaut's claiming that this this is a picture of the moon as something's happening. But look at how it changes its shape from the from the perspective of the International Space Station, but also with regards to the colour. Now, I'm not saying that this is true. I'm not saying it's untrue. I'm just raising awareness that, that it exists because this doesn't support... If this is actually true, and it's come from the Russian cosmonaut guy that said that we didn't go to the moon then there's an explanation that's required here because the International Space Station is showing something completely different to what you'd expect to see if we were on a sphere, not only with regards to its squashing, but with regards to changing shape. So I'll just read what it says in the uh, thing. It says, Russian cosmonaut Sergei Kudshevkolong on Tuesday published footage of the moon setting filmed from the International Space Station. The video shows how the moon gradually flattens and then completely vanishes in the dark. Its reflected, reflected light passes through the Earth's atmosphere and gets distorted. But we don't, it's supposed to be setting. So if it's setting from the perspective of the International Space Station, there should be an Earth in the way, but there is no Earth in the way. So I'm not sure that I, I'm satisfied that we're seeing the setting moon because the Earth should be in the picture, but it doesn't seem to be. Is, but I just wanted to raise awareness because it's very interesting. You said it was taken from the yeah. ISS? Where's that exactly? Uh, well, it's in that, that medium that can't possibly be true uh, called the vacuum of space. Oh, so you're saying these pictures that suddenly we need to discuss and dissect have been taken from a place that isn't real? Oh, well, then that doesn't really concern me about discussing the pictures. They're automatically well, it, bunk. They've been taken from a place that doesn't exist. Well, we can discuss them from the perspective of it's a claim of a cosmonaut. That's essentially NASA, but Russia's version of it. And we'd like an explanation. How does the moon set on, on the Earth if it's not got the Earth to set behind? No, I'm not too interested in that. How do you take pictures from a second law of thermodynamics violation sky vacuum in a presupposed orbit around a Earth that's spherical based on an R value that's been debunked? Your presupposed orbital motion of the ISS is taking place in a second law of thermodynamics violation. So I'd like to know how it got these pictures with us still breathing. That's what I'd like to know first. How are the pictures acquired and we are dead? And if you apply, I want to know if, the, given that they say that the moon is setting and it's obviously getting lower towards the horizon, presumably that's what he means word setting well they always apply snell's law and they always say that as light bends into the um, more dense medium it bends away from the observer so really it should stretch the moon because the light's coming into the eye of the camera but it's being bent away from the medium as it as it uh, towards the medium as it does so so what it should be stretching it not shrinking it sorry what's the anyway. medium again i'm with i'm with you nathan i'm just reading it now and it says the light is bent as it crosses two different mediums. I know one medium is the air. I can validate that. But then the rest of it has gone off for the light to cross into another medium, which turns out to be second law of thermodynamics violation. So what does it say the second medium is? It is nonsensical because it's contradictory to known science. What does it say the second or medium is? I, I caught the first one, and then obviously I've described space as a second law of thermodynamics violation. Did they say the second medium it traverses is space? Well, uh, the light is bent as it crosses two different mediums of of space and the Earth's atmosphere. Uh, oh, space so, is yeah. fake. Space. Second law of thermodynamics yeah. violation. I see that bit wasn't explicit, uh, Adam. Yeah, but yes, yes, absolutely, Adam. Yeah, the region they're claiming that is going to have this effect that you're trying to discuss, Anthony, is a fake place. It didn't traverse a sky vacuum. So how are you going to discuss this? You need to prove that they're actually in a second law of thermodynamics for violation sky vacuum taking these pictures first. Well, is is another point I wanted to raise. It says in the blurb, it says, it's, it's reflected light passes through the Earth's atmosphere and it gets distorted. And I'll get this. It then says, the Earth's horizon itself is invisible. Everything happens at night. How is the Earth's horizon, the thing that's supposed to be causing the, the moon to set, how is that meant to be invisible? I can it's tell like, you the answer. What? I know the answer to this. The reason 
is because the horizon they're describing is a fictitious model-based horizon that's being depicted from a fake place they've invented. So that horizon, that would be Earth curve, the edge boats fall over, that can be anything you like. It's a, a horizon that only exists in a model. So if one day they, they decide that it's an invisible horizon, which is pretty much what we were told yesterday by Rumpus, the geometric horizon doesn't exist. Well, in this instance, not only does it not exist, only exist in maths, it's completely invisible in this instance. And you can do that with a made-up horizon in a model that isn't real and is only a philosophy. Your horizon can be anything you like in that. In reality, our horizon is a non-physical location. It's definitely visible, though. It's apparent. Not invisible. I mean, that's absurd. But like I say, if you're in a heliocentric worldview where you're sat in a vacuum with gas pressure not filling it, well, then your horizon can be anything you like, right? I get what you're saying, though. It should definitely be, it should definitely be getting bigger, not shrinking, like a setting sun or a setting anything. Whoever wants to chime in, feel free. Uh, I'm, I can't see what y'all are talking about. Cause I'm in Discord, but is it possible that they've taken this uh, pictures or video or whatever from just high altitude and not actually some bullshit space? Maybe that's for them to claim. However, they claim it's taken from a sky vacuum. So we could postulate where it's actually taken from and how they've done the fakery. But it's much, much more efficient to just say, where were these pictures taken from again? Why aren't we dead? We've got gas pressure. Why isn't it filling the area they travelled to? That would be an area of low pressure that the gas would want to expand into. And the way you calculate how we have gas pressure, you need a volume. And the volume, if the space vacuum was real, would be the volume of that space vacuum. And that would be the area that the gas we're breathing dissipated, past tense, into. We'd all be dead if they could acquire these pictures. And we're not. So the sky definitely isn't a vacuum. They haven't taken pictures from this area. It's a lie. Agreed. They are, they are claiming, Nathan, that it is a physical Earth edge that's creating this effect, though. A physical earth curve edge that's invisible. Hmm. Yeah. The spaceman explained in a Twitter post, spaceman, <laughs> uh, before it disappears behind the horizon, its reflected light passes through the earth atmosphere is distorted. The earth can't be properly seen in the frame. Yeah. The horizon, the edge of the uh, uh, atmosphere, it can't be seen in the frame. So it appears as if the moon is deflating, deflating and then flattening out before it disappears. Hmm. Where were these pictures taken from again? <laughs> but they've reified the horizon to be Earth's edge is the, the point there. Even though, in full Rumpus style, they admit that you wouldn't actually be able to see this geographic horizon. You can only see the apparent horizon which the moon disappears behind. As I say, in the world of fantasy that is heliocentrism, <laughs> you can have as many horizons as you like and they can do anything you want because it's not reality. In reality, we only have one horizon. It's apparent. Not invisible, apparent. <laughs> yeah, we can see it, right? Now the horizon in their globe Earth mathematics is physical and geometric. Here's an example in orthographic view of what they claim your horizon is. Now I understand that horizons typically run from left to right in a picture you take. However, in this, you can see the side of your own head and the horizon's depicted as a single tangent point. But that's what they claim your horizon is. It's a physical earth curve obstruction that's invisible Ow. in this instance. Oh, I've got a, I've got a straight cool. one. He noted that the video was filmed during the night, so the earth's horizon is invisible in the frame. <laughs> how, do you measure, how do you measure a horizon that's not visible? How do you measure that? You don't. It sounds just—it sounds just like the uh, Emperor's New Clothes, doesn't it? You know, only the intelligent people can see that he's wearing the finest of uh, of gear. Well, it's like only the intelligent blurthers can see that the Earth's horizon is definitely the cause of that squashing, not the obstruction, the squashing. So, hopefully, so obviously, like how. I just love the fact that they've got an invisible horizon now. <laughs> right, uh, right, because terrestrial refraction is the fabric of the Emperor's clothes. See. The invisible apparent horizon that's geometric and non-physical simultaneously. Paradoxically, it's an invisible apparent non-physical physical geometric horizon. The formerly known as Earth curve. 
Any evidence you can have gas pressure without the necessary antecedent of a container to press upon? Where is nah. it again? <laughs> I can do it like you. The space is fake. We'd all be dead. We'd all be dead. Does that mean that we need to prove what space is? No. No. We need to know that it's not what it's not. That's my favourite line from the chat currently. So you get to the point where they've understood to some degree that you can't have gas pressure without a container. It's a violation of natural law. And then they revert to, well, what's the sky dome made of? And you're like, oh, it's really nice that you are now in the same boat as me. Intrigued with what the sky is. Many questions to be asked. Yeah, me too. Unfortunately, even though you're using that as a deflection from the fact that you recognise that space is fake, we're both in the same boat with a massive deception about what the sky is. Yeah, so you're going to ask me. Suddenly I'm the arbiter of what the sky is. No, I'm just like you. I've been deceived too. I used to think it was a vacuum because that's what we're being told and currently being told to this day. So I don't know what the sky is and why would I when all I've got to go on is yeah. the deception? Oh. Bunnies and ballers respond like computers. So if you just give them input that they're not programmed for, they just say syntax error. Can you please insert proper programming? So <laughs> syntax error. Yeah. So I was asked what the what the dome was made out of. Uh, say that as a win. When they ask you what the dome's made of, they are demonstrating their recognition that we must have containment. Now, they immediately right, revert yeah. to dome and you proving what it is and how it's made. Well, we don't know that. But likewise, we recognise, as they then do when they ask you that question, the awful truth. The sky is not a vacuum. And you're asking me to t show you what's containing the gas? So you understand that the gas must be contained then? It can't be both simultaneously an open system for spaceships and the ISS to travel out to, but simultaneously closed for gas pressure for us to breathe. You can't be an open, closed system. You can't have gas pressure not expanding into an area it has to expand into. That would be space. Gas would just expand into the space. Without containment, we'd have no pressure. We'd all be dead. <laughs> Uh, if we're done, I want to go back to perspective. I've got four pictures of Master B of an airplane and what's below them pictures. Okay. I've got it up. Go ahead. All right. So you see the first one shows the edge of an airplane wing and a, a river and the ocean and some city over there. Go to the next one. Same one. Now, here's perspective. How come the airplane wing looks bigger than those buildings when in actuality they're not? Go to the next one. See the farm fields? You see how they get smaller and smaller? So this is perspective. This is so vital that the ballers want to th throw out of how far you can see and angular size change. And here's the last one. Uh, those buildings, that's a, that's a small city there, and there's no way uh, that as you get closer, uh, those buildings won't look bigger. So you can't get rid of perspective, it's part of life. So your argument dies there, ballers. Thank you very much. Any evidence of the distance to the sun? Ah, uh, finally, it's over there again. Yeah, it is actually over there today for me too. <laughs> As nice as it is to say that. Snow on the ground. The and sun got sun and snow on the ground at the same time. It's lovely. Yeah, great, isn't it? All the extra light. Yeah, it's really, really bright. It's lovely. It's so nice. Oh. Yep. Well, what is it, though? What, the snow? It's like frozen water. <laughs> sun. What is the sun? Oh, the sun. Oh, my bad. I have no idea. It's an intangible object that we can't get to measure or touch. I thought snow was solid liquid gas. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah, I can't, I can't even do it. <laughs> snow go down, go boom, boom. That's, uh, that's yellow snow, Adam. Uh, my dog makes that. Hey, everybody. Hey, Brian. All right.
Um, Nathan, could I uh, oh, join with my computer uh, as well, just for a, a brief amount of time, and sh share something? Transhumanism? Yeah. Not having that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can do whatever you like, Brian. Very, you need good. To, Very good. You mean you need to drop and rejoin on a different device so you can share? Uh, can I rejoin on the... No, I want to keep talking on this uh, one and just join on my computer as well. If yeah, that's, that's fine. Okay, so yeah, yeah, yeah. two Brian's. Yeah, yeah, no problem. I just I want to share something that's uh, going to be interesting. Go ahead. Um, thank you. We'll talk uh, about ourselves while moment. you're sorting out that little technical bit and getting online with your computer and sharing. And once you're up shared, I'll uh, put you on and let you know. Right. Go on, Adam. Thank you. Or maybe not. Any evidence of a self-perpetuating molten iron core at the centre of a presupposed spherical Earth? Ooh, definitely. It's the key word, presupposed. No, that's a reification fallacy again. No, no, no. Do you know, when I was in high school, my art teacher, his name was Mr. Varden, um, he used to always try and get us to, like, do Cezanne-style paintings, and he'd all, his mantra was always, think Cezanne, and you will be Cezanne. So it's basically the same mantra for the ball. Think ball, and it will be a ball. That is literally what's happening. It's a ball of the very middle-class school, that. I can't imagine one of our teachers saying that to us. <laughs> yeah, it's an old grammar school. <laughs> Tony, Tony, it's called the placebo effect. <laughs> the placebo, yeah, that's good. I didn't know you were from a grammar school. Go on, crack grammar the school. Not grammar. I, I could just tell that sleeping was from a glamour school. Well, I've got you too. Well, you're far too quiet. I'm, that's all right, I've got him. Go ahead, crack, crack villain, say again. <laughs> Guys in G+, can you just mute a second? Go ahead, one That's more cool, time, crack villain. Cool. Oh my god, go away. Go on. Are, you, are you trolling me? <laughs> no, I just need everyone else to shut up. Go ahead, crack villain. Oh. Well, the joke has sort of lost its uh, point now. <laughs> I was just saying, well, if you don't, no, if you... sleeping. That's right. what we need. We need everybody to interrupt him immediately. That's what we need. Just to make the punchline <laughs> less... Funny. Thank you so much. Try I, again, I'm crack villain. Rumpus. I'm being rumpus by the anti-rumpuses. This is brilliant. <laughs> no, just didn't hear the joke. We're not anti-rumpuses. So, go get a bottle of water. Uh, a bottle of water? Well. Well, we I'm didn't hear the joke. Tell problem. us the joke. Come on. Well, it wasn't a joke. I was just saying sleeping. I could tell that you went to a glamour school, not a grammar. A glamour, a glamour school. school, thanks. <laughs> 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 uh, I I thought it was Hogwarts. <laughs> what are you trying to say? No, it well, wasn't Hogwarts. In uh, in LA, it's not Cezanne. It's a can of spray paint and graffiti. What? That how you learn how to write? You lost me on that one, Ken. Yeah, oh, that's okay. okay. I, I just you. got here, so I don't even know what's Sleeping going Warrior. Yeah, <laughs> chocolate. <laughs> way to ruin my way to ruin my line, chocolate. <laughs> just got here. What's up, everybody? Right. What happened to Brian? It's just just started presenting. So if you can all um if I can beg your indulgence on Brian's behalf. You're up and presented now, Brian. Hi Nathan. Hey chocolate. Um What's up, brother? Uh, yeah, this is something that was shared with me the other day uh, by a baller who was trying to debunk. Well, he wasn't trying to debunk uh, optical drop with this. He was just, uh, I said that ballers don't make their own demonstrations. As in, they don't demonstrate their claims. They don't demonstrate gas pressure without a container. They don't demonstrate all these other claims they have. <clears throat> right. So this was present presented to me. This is from Slide Sparkane, okay? And it's called Nathan Kant Perspective. <clears throat> And it was some live hangout he had. So I'm just going to make the screen big here, right? So what he's detailing here, and this is in 2018, what he's showing here, if you can see it, there's a, like a, a toy car and then a, another toy truck behind that and some big Lego toy pieces. And behind that, there's a much higher thing there. This is called visual occultation. So what it means is something that is, let's just say, higher than your, uh, higher than your viewer height in the foreground can block something that's way higher than that in the background. 
uh, sorry, block a large amount of something that's way higher in the back background. It's just an, uh, it's just a perspective thing. It's like when you're in a city and you're looking at a, a very high building, like somewhere like especially like New York, and there's a high building in front of you. That's only half the height of this other building, but you're only barely, barely able to see the higher the, the top of the higher building due to your it's an angle thing. It's due to your angle of view. That's all it is. So. Bigger things in the in the background can be blocked, can be mostly blocked by a not so big thing in the foreground. For a, an observer who's looking at something that's, uh, if the thing in the foreground is slightly is at the same elevation or at the same height or higher than than the observer. So are you all following that so far? Everyone get yeah. that, Nathan? You understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, right. this, so this is my video. This is from Sly Falcon, and this is where I'm going with this, right? He obviously either didn't know about this effect before this time, or he did know, and he's a lawyer. And I, and I tell you why. Because I detailed this effect, and so did someone else who made a video about this, uh, about this thing I'm going to show, right? Back in 2017. And I detailed it even uh, in 2018, I detailed it in, um, in um, a presentation on Matthews. Here is Mount San Jacinto, okay? Los Angeles is 100 feet higher than Jay Tolan Media's uh, observation height. So his observation height was 150 foot. Now it's, uh, uh, Los Angeles is 250 foot on average, right? So it is an average 100 foot higher than he than his observation height. And that's why, with a lot of other things like compression and different things, that's why you can't see the bottom of uh, all of Mount San Jacinto because it's been up, 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 occulted by Los Angeles, right? Now, Sly Sparkane was one of the people who came out in force claiming that was our curve. Yet he turns around a year later and makes this about visual occultation. Now, I don't even, I haven't watched the video, so I don't know if he calls it visual occultation. I think the more official name is for photographic occultation. But I would like Sly to explain how we can make this attacking you, Nathan. I don't even know what he's attacking you on. Uh, supposedly, you can't perspective being a flat earther. Uh, unbelievable. Uh, but he's making this here, and he's showing visual occultation. And he, he spends a good bit of time showing it. Because this thing in the background, this black thing, this is way higher than the car. Yet the car is blocking nearly half of it, it from this angle. Right? So why was he claiming our curve here when this is exactly the same thing as that? So how come does he need to go back and retract that this is not our curve and the earth is flat? Yeah, he Would does. he address this? I wonder. Well, the video that that's you're showing that that's yeah. that still is is my video. So what he's got on screen with the car, that's my lounge, my car, and my setup oh, that right. I've used to demonstrate perspective. Now, what he did was he recreated that in a 3D program, and it was comical because what he did was he took the car in the 3D program and presumably on his mouse wheel slid it back and forth in perspective terms and said, at no distance will it ever disappear. As he said it. It got too small to see in his 3D rendering and disappeared. Just as he said it, it was absolutely comical. Anyway, with that, I'm going to say if you are watching this on either Nathan Oakley 1980 or Nathan Oakley Premiering Streams, then stay tuned as there will be an after show to follow. Unfortunately, if you are watching this live, then this is where we bid you farewell. I think there was actually a super chat that came in right at the end. Let's just have a quick look. Yes. Uh, Powell Broder, thank you very much indeed for the super chat. Really do appreciate your support. Thank you very much indeed. Once again, stay tuned if you are watching on either Premiering Stream. I've been Nathan Oakley, and I'll see you all in the next video. Well, everything except earth curve chocolate <laughs> ch chocolate from now on if anybody says that tell them 10th man will admit that it was he because i take blame for perspective i, I am the citation i take blame for perspective <laughs> all right
Right. Well, we could just call it Flurfspective ourselves, just to screw with them. Because it's okay. still perspective, it's still real. It's a bit highbrow, I think, but I think. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're right, Alvin. Well, I think whenever they tell us now, like we forgot about optics, right? I was just about to say, yeah, to say chocolate's always one step ahead of me. Going yeah. back in our face. I was just about to reference. Hold on one second. I was just about to reference what chocolate dropped in the chat right at the end of the show yesterday, which was unorthodox describing how a bottom-up obstruction prior to the physical geometric sphero obstruction would be an optical limitation that would have been the perfect moment to say oh you mean fluff perspective <laughs> yeah that's why we all told them uh yeah welcome to flat earth <laughs> that's our argument clown <laughs> what do you mean great Yeah, their argument is over. I did not even have an argument anymore. Uh, it's like we're they slapping gave that them around, you know? Their argument they told us we don't see anymore. Yeah. Their curve of the earth, their geometric horizon, we don't even see it anymore. Never seen it. Like, Can't measure it's it. Like that, it's like that. It's like that, <laughs> that, that. That big kid that's holding a little kid back, and he's just swinging away. At, but, he's, you know, he's holding him in a, with, his, with his hand on his forehead, and he's just swinging, swinging, swinging. Yep. Well, that's what a liar, that's what a liar does, or that's what, you know, that's what you uh, experience in a toxic relationship, whereas you're sharp as a tack, someone does something and you remember, and but they just justified it to hell, right? And then to save the relationship, you go, all right, well, you know what, fuck it. And then, you know, sometime down the road, you do something similar, and they call you out, and you're like, hold on. I thought that this was justifiable. And then they go, what are you talking about? I don't remember what you're talking about. All I know is you're wrong now. Like, so they'll basically take our arguments. They'll lie and say that we've never had those arguments. And I'm just so thankful that we have hours of days of months of years of video of these guys lying all over the place. Lying like rugs. Yeah, it's everything Throw, rug. Throw dusty rugs. Everything's recorded. Yep. That was partially one of the reasons I like this format. Because that was one of the things that I felt, you know, the, the guys who would automatically remove commenters that are leveling a load of disdain or mumbo jumbo incorrect assertions, they'd get banned and timed out, etc, etc. It's like, well, no, I actually do want to document those things. So people send me emails saying, why are you letting this toxic poison into your chat? You need to be more moderate. And it's like, if I try and explain to you that this is documentation. I had to moan at Neil last night for this. So he came into the Uncut and After Show and timed out someone I've been arguing with for about 20 straight minutes. Well, as soon as you time them out, all their messages disappear, which frustrates me. Now, obviously, Neil's annoyed because the guy won't accept his dead end that he's reached and because he's now chanting over and over again so we timed him out which is kind of fair enough if I wasn't there and it wasn't me I probably wouldn't care but what I really want is for people to be able to go back to that video and see the discussion see what went back and forth see how it went down see how the argument was disproved how it then had to be reasserted 15 times how the person circle jerk back to the same assertion that had been debunked over and over again I want that to all be documented so it's not like I, I want these poisons. I, I agree. Agree. Can I input something? <laughs> I agree. Hold I think on. that... What hole? No, you are. Now, what did I do? I want to know what I did. Don't worry about it, Neil. It's, it tells me what you do as a moderator, as the channel owner. So nudge, nudge, nudge. Probably best not to get into this, given that I, I, I watched you time someone out I was arguing with. <laughs> but for me... Oh, I didn't know you were arguing with him. See, that's why you should never just come in and hear a guy okay. say something not like an iron man. I did not know that. I'm sorry. It's okay. Don't worry. You didn't know that. I didn't explicitly tell you either, which is why I'm not giving you an earful. I'm just giving it as an example rather than giving you an earful so that you subtly hopefully get the hint, although it's a bit less subtle now I've said that. But nevertheless, <laughs> I want it to be left. In other words, when people ask me why there's scum in the chat and why the chat's like poison, it's like because Globe Earth is poison. Because, yeah, it's been perpetrated by psychopaths that's why it's so toxic yeah you're absolutely right it's toxic uh, can i say something there yeah go ahead 
just briefly, um, I, I want Slice Park Gain to come back and give, uh, just want to let, like, it doesn't matter that it's your video. He is showing it. He's not arguing against it. He's arguing against a different thing, not against that. He's totally accepting of that effect. So how come he was fighting against that effect and calling it our core of a year beforehand? I still want him to, to deal with that. I can't. Right, thank you. Oh, well, they can't. That's the cognitive dissonance that they're now displaying and is currently being verbalised by an orthodox. Well, that's an optical effect. Uh, your maths has one cause for things disappearing. Earth curve. So what is optical? No, 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 no. You don't have optical anything in your geometric earth curve maths that excludes perspective. You see the side of your own head. You're not seeing the stuff get smaller into the distance. Now, when I had that argument with him, it's because we're offering an alternative to their assertion of earth curve. So it's not earth curve getting in the way. It's merely the effect of perspective. So then he takes, or Slice Barcane takes, an isolated example made by me of perspective in action and just details and just describes or pulls apart or disagrees with my example of perspective. Does he juxtapose it with his hijacking of perspective in Earth Curve Mathematics and orthographic new? No, of course he doesn't, because he's holding both positions. He'll quite happily talk all day about perspective, but then completely ignore it and relinquish it when describing a begging the question proof of nothing perspective hijacking Earth Curve calculator. Both positions being held simultaneously is absolutely no issue for a, a globe head. Earth Curve getting in the way? Earth Curve in a different position non-physical? Earth turns underneath to give Coriolis. Earth turns with the atmosphere so there's no drift. Earth's a closed system so that we can have gas pressure to breathe. Earth's an open system because you can go out of it and photograph it as a closed system. They're more than capable of holding both positions in multiple different subjects when it comes to their fundy belief in a sphere. That's going to be no issue. Why do you hold both positions, Sly? Why is it that you can detail optical effects and then ignore them in Earth curve? Well, because it's geometry. That's what I'll say. You don't need perspective in geometry. That's what he used to say to me. Like, all oh, right, but you're asserting it's comparable to this picture with perspective. Well, I think you just well, succinctly described the pain of cognitive dissonance is when you hold both positions at the same time, there's an endless debate in your own head. Yeah, and we used to see that as malicious. I gave Anthony Riley as an example recently with, uh, who was it? It wasn't Sly Sarpa. Who was the example you asked me to look at recently, Sleeping Warrior? Oh, it's Conspiracy Cats. I made a video about it. So he, Anthony's asking me if it's nefarious. I'm like, no, not nefarious. It's cognitive dissonance. He's holding two positions at once. Now, me, I only realised this recently. I'm like, of a similar opinion to Anthony, why would they try and phrase their argument in such a way where they're repositioning their claim onto me why is it that seems clever no that's just the way that someone in cognitive dissonance reasons things out in other words they present both positions at the same time well if you can keep track of both positions at the same time you can summarize them as they contradict each other very difficult if you are under the impression that they're describing something that contradicts something they said earlier because they're clever well no they'll literally say i didn't say that when they only said it 30 seconds ago because they are literally just in cognitive dissonance. And we need to start recognising that more and highlighting it more, rather than assuming the reason you go around in circles over and over again with the same argument is because they're somehow nefariously trying to programme the people in your audience or lying to you. It's like, no, they're just holding the same position you've debunked simultaneously as either accepting the debunking, reasoning that that's also part of their claim, claiming that the claim you've debunked is actually your claim and not theirs. You know, those are all states of cognitive dissonance. But you know what, like people do have to uh, understand what cognitive dissonance is like that. That's a word that should be mainstream because uh, a lot of flat earth uh, terms. Uh, well, OK, they're not flat earth terms. It's just words that we use, like fallacious reasoning, et cetera, et cetera. Like these are things that I see more and more in mainstream uh, talks, uh, even if it's not about flat earth. But my whole point is. In everyday conversation, yeah, you're right. Someone will say, hey, and I'm not talking about flat earth conversation. I mean, just in general, they'll say, hey, I didn't say that. And I'll say, yes, you did. This is exactly what she said. And when I repeat to them exactly what they said, like the little tape recorder that I am, uh, they then say, well, you know, that's not what I meant. 
but then they'll just redress exactly the same lament. Yeah, or you'll repeat them verbatim and they'll tell you you're twisting their words. Oh, you think you're right about everything. Never that many times. <laughs> yep, yep. Yeah, I, I find people don't like when their own words are thrown back at them. In that type of instance, <laughs> they don't like it. Because it's like hearing what you just said coming from somebody else's mouth all of a sudden now you have to think about that as opposed to just you know defending it by instinct now you got to think about it and now it sounds so stupid that you're like how could i have said that <laughs> yeah ridiculous my man dan yeah. played ba recently chopped out admittedly out to do some editing just to alleviate the concern that Simon dan might try and strike me down so I had to do a minor edit at the beginning and end. But ultimately, it was an unended, unedited, trimmed out section where he's describing his justification for saying, you and your reference frames are ruined. Now, we don't have reference frames on the flat Earth side of the argument, and it's absolutely asserted that Earth has a Coriolis effect requiring two reference frames. Well, when you play that back to somebody, just unedited, it's absolutely awful. It sounds terrible. And I didn't have to do a damn thing. And QE was the one who highlighted this to me years ago. Just let them speak. Just let them open their mouth. They'll hang themselves. I absolutely guarantee it. Because they're in the wrong. We're not standing on a sphere. We're not turning underneath. We haven't got Coriolis effect. And their justification for why we don't have something they claim we do will leave them hanging themselves. And they do, frequently. We would call this convenient amnesia. Let's try that again. We would call this convenient amnesia. Try that again. <laughs> <laughs> First Hi, time baby. I've heard it. <laughs> I didn't say that. Yeah, you did. I got to record it. Uh, oh, that's not, no, no, that's not what I meant. No, that's my voice. What, but what that's happened what was <laughs> what he really meant. Well, we That's get why I love that shit with Neil deGrasse Tyson and Michi Kaku. You know the, these quotes. I like to say, and people will tell me, "Oh, but you're you you're using it out of context." Really? Because I speak English, <laughs> so tell me what context he 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 meant. Because he stated his quote clearly. No, nah, no, nah, he he meant something else. <laughs> yeah. And this is, uh, we got to understand, awesome. like, we have, we, like, people think that tactics are sleazy. No, no, no. Tactic is, 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 you're ba it's just a, a way of uh, carrying out um, something. You know what I mean? Like, it, it's just the way you do it. And, you know, tactic, the, the, the reason that I'm, like, I try to be really, disturbing to their psyche so they'll say you know yeah i believe i live on a sphere and i'm like um no no you live on a ball a sphere is a fancy word for ball and you think air can be held on the outside of this ball that's what you think you know and there's no there's no other way to <laughs> that's exactly what it is <laughs> what are you... Yep. you know, there's going to come a point where somebody says nobody claims that we have gas sticking to a ball it's coming yeah conspiracy cat said it it's already happened a yeah couple times he's kind of said what vacuum and we're like yeah that's our question what vacuum <laughs> said you can't <laughs> have that conspiracy cats made it explicitly clear you can't have that high pressure gas High pressurized system. Can't have it. Not without a container. Well. So, sooner, sooner or later, somebody's going to. Nobody claims the globe is a ball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hmm. What radius? 
huge, it's right? Ball, it's going to get worse. That's for their position, it's going to get it? worse for ball. cats later. Who's Anthony that directed oh, me yeah. to this? Stop, John. Yeah. He you said it's going to get worse for cats a bit later. Yeah, doing you won't be able to recover. Yummy. You're doing so on the night. Yummy. Pressure, requ gas pressure requires a container. A defined system oh. that's going to obey the gas laws. And to do that, you have huge difference in pressures between one part of gas and another. There is no huge difference in pressure in what we actually see and observe. What's the container in this picture? Oh, there isn't one. There's just a vast amount of space for the gas to fill. It expands in all directions, all vectors. Nowhere do we have this. A massive pressure next to a low pressure. We don't, we don't have that. Nowhere do we have this. A massive pressure next to a low pressure. We don't, we don't have that. Nowhere do we have this a massive pressure next to a low pressure we don't we don't have that we don't we don't have that we don't we don't have that <laughs> really <laughs> yeah we don't have that okay a massive pressure next to a low pressure like gas pressure that we're breathing and 10 to the minus 17 tor sky vacuum we don't have that He said it himself. What's on the docket for cats tonight? Of... What's on the docket for cats tonight then? What's on the what's on the docket? Um when he opens up his mouth, that's on the docket. I see. Without the container <laughs> there can be no pressure. Without the balloon there is no pressure. We don't have that. A high pressurized system <laughs> next to a low pressure system. We don't, we can't have that. He's going to display his second law prowess to everyone. So we're going to see how that, that works out. Is that a recent thing he's done or is it an old presentation? Um, It's an older it's older. It doesn't matter. I mean, he's not going to be able to recover. And something a little newer. Excellent. It's going to be short and sweet and deadly. Might as well plug it properly. So by the time you're watching this, unless you're a Nathan Oakley channel member, uh, it'll have gone out yesterday. So check it out on Quantum Eraser channel. The title is... Conspiracy Cat's Demise. Rest, R.I.P. Rest in peace. That's on the Quantum Eraser YouTube channel. Be here or be sphere. <laughs> Bit somber in here, isn't it? I love it. Maybe they're out somewhere looking for their geometric horizon that we've never seen. And Brett's looking for the tea and water. Water? Oh, water. What? Yeah, water. <laughs> water. <laughs> is. But what? Where's my bottle of water, mate? What's up, crack? <laughs> like Sleeping no, Warrior no, no. looking for the A in air. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You holding those hostage? Well, not all of us went to glamour schools. <laughs> We're being quiet, hoping that a cockroach will crawl out. <laughs> Have a look, see who we've got in Discord. Right. Raid. Brave Globe Souls in Discord today. Mm. 
No, this is a place people come when they're not brave. And then they're not brave enough to come in here. Not what I'm told. QE, hook us oh. up, dude. Yep, what's up? Give us a Coney Island special. I don't have any glass in here, man. Rawr. See, QE at least gets things like that. You know, you state the place that they're from in the film, and he, he remembers these things. He needs to start whispering, Paul Tarts. <laughs> you can't get over that one, can you? That was brilliant. Uh... I think the problem is cockroaches can't come out till they get all the bugs worked out. Mm -hmm. Terrible pun, my cue to round out this show. Terrible. It <laughs> must be something to talk about. Again, Brian, please. Yeah, Temp, you've been off today, man. Oh. Does... Am I bugging you? <laughs> <laughs> it's the whole point is to annoy people. going to be that awful pun that I ran the show out on, isn't it? With that, I'm going to say a huge, massive, enormous thank you to both Discord and G Plus panels for making today's after show possible. Of course, a massive thank you to all of you in either Nathan Oakley 1980 or Nathan Oakley premiering streams for hopefully smashing the super chat, liking, commenting, sharing, subscribing, and all that good stuff. Also below this video, there is a link to get £50 back for switching your UK power supplier to Octopus Energy. I've been Nathan Oakley, and I'll see you all in the next video. Day.